<laughs> volatility is up and and that's pretty much it and then everything else is down basically really everything else is down like two three percent now we just got the economic data out there which is why why you are here i i presume or you're just hoping to see winston's ever so fluffy ears which he's lying lying right next to me so let me just take a snapshot of this and put it on here so we can really go through this now of course I must always say this, the highlight of every video is that this is not financial advice. Yay, we have disclaimers. Isn't that amazing? Our intention, my intention, the point of this entire channel is education. Make you better investors. I strongly believe teaching people to invest way, way, way more useful than telling them to buy specific stocks because you will not have faith when those stocks happen to come down 30%, 50%, unless you've done the research yourself. And I'll some more on that in a second. We've got a really amazing upgrade to our my favorite tool coming. So I'll show you that in a second. Right, so let's go through the data. Personal income, we were expecting a 0.3% increase. We got a 0.5% increase. That's higher than expected. Personal spending, we were expecting 0.8%. That's lower than expected. Price index, PCE, that's personal consumption expenditure index. The Fed likes it. We were expecting 6.7. It's come in lower. Interesting. That's year on year. Month on month, obviously also lower. Very interesting. Initial jobless claims. We were expecting 218,000 people to be standing around the, the block of the doll house. And 231. That's more than expected. That's more than expected. Is this the turn that we've been waiting for? the miserable capitalists that we are hoping for people to be unemployed so we can make more money on our tech stocks, right? That's basically what we are. The core price index month on month, so this strips out energy, is basically flat. It's exactly as expected, so no news there. Continuous being jobless claims are also up from where we expected them to be. Okay, so let's score this on the basis of the miserable growth investor, stock investor that we are. So if you are a stock investor with a, with a growth tilt, then which one of these is good news? Personal income going up. Is that really good news? Well, it implies that the economy is strong. It implies that wages are going up. So I would say that this is actually not good news. Personal spending declining strangely enough, is good news because it means what the Fed's doing and consumer sentiment falling is having an impact. It'll slow down demand. That's the, the one thing that the Fed is trying to achieve is reduce spending. So that's good news for us. The month-on-month -month PCE price index is lower than expected. That is very, very good news. I give that a double tick. Initial jobless claims being higher than expected is ethically and morally morally wrong, uh, but it's good news. <laughs> and the core PECE price index being flat, well, it's better than it going up, but it's it's sort of neither here nor there. So it's sort of a you know a sideways a movement. And then continuing jobless claims going up more than expected. That is also good news. I know it's morally bankrupt and all of that, but that's just the, the world we live in. So how is the market going to react to this? Because this is broadly good news for the tech market. So let's have a quick look then here at our stock screen. Now, this is pre-market, so you might need to give this a few minutes. Not everybody's as smart as you and, and you know, watching me, me live here in the morning. So Mullins come down again. That's generally speaking a good sign. Mullins, the new AMC, I'm sorry to say. It's the new, the new panic indicator uh, that we have, the canary and the coal mine. But still, we're not seeing a lot of movement here. Let's have a look at QQQ. I'll open the chart for us on that. Let me just open the stock chart. Now, this, by the way, is Neo this morning in Hong Kong, right? Nice recovery, very nice recovery. We can talk about that as well. So let me put this on a minute chart. And then this is pre-market. The yellow bit is pre-market. So the pre-market's going to continue for some time. Can we make this a bit bigger? We need this a little bit bigger. So you see the data came out and boom. Can you see that? Can you see that spike here? 
we went from 279 to 280, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a very significant spike. And you see the volume here, positive green volume shooting up. So the market is with us on this. This is good news for tech, very good news for tech. More people unemployed, slightly lower inflation. Yay, let's have a party, right? Just exactly what we want going into the 4th of July weekend is celebrate that there are more people unemployed. It's a really odd world we live in, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about that, but that's where we are. So I would expect this to continue to improve a little bit here throughout the next few minutes, and we keep an eye on that. Let me see if there are any questions from you guys. Good morning to everybody. Smash the like button. Um, Robert's always at the airport. Um, you're always at the airport, aren't you? Good morning, everybody. Information numbers are good indeed. Um, hello to the four-legged friends. Thanks for tuning in from Facebook. Appreciate that. Can't see your name, unfortunately, when you tune in from Facebook. So you're just the chap or the lady from Facebook. Uh, YG asking about when is, a, when is a good time to take losses on options contracts? I generally at this point say as early as possible. Uh, that's important to, to understand. Also super important to understand having one trade open only is a very risky move. You, got, you wanna have a diversified portfolio of options trades open because the market does move around quite a lot and you want to be have some stocks that are moving in one way, some in the other way, and that way you are kind of balancing out. So market neutrality is always what we aim for. Near all-time high deliveries tomorrow? Well, I certainly hope so. Did you see the statement out from Morgan Stanley? Most bullish thing I've ever seen. Anybody write from an investment bank? They are saying, we estimate, okay, here we go. We believe Neo's upbeat June sales, we don't know what they are yet, but obviously they do, together with good volume trajectory into second half, aided by a strong product pipeline, will revive investor confidence in the company's operations and trigger a rebound in the stock. And they're saying, we believe the share price will rise in absolute terms over the next 15 days. That's super specific. I mean, that's really specific. Doesn't mean that they're right, but this Morgan Stanley saying that, and they put a 70 to 80% probability on that. Maybe they're watching me and they're getting inspired by my 80% probability traits. <laughs> Just kidding. So that's some, some definitely some positives there on, on, on NEO. Uh, NEO also very nicely in the UK press. Metro, very popular free newspaper gets handed out if you leave, a, leave the tube in London. They basically throw them at you or hit you over the head with them. A full page ad here. It, about the benefits of battery swapping and this station being in Norway. So this, this kind of Norway, you know, post this, this uh, beach, what do you call it? When you are the forward, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> they, is, they're getting some serious press from us across Europe. Their PR is doing a really fantastic job, which is, which is really quite uh, something. So Neo Europe PR, I don't know who is it, doing that, but they're doing a really, really good job. They're getting tons of positive coverage from all sorts of organizations that I didn't didn't expect. Um, Righty ho. So data for us, good news. Yay. Now the other thing, let me show you this with data. So if you are on our Discord, you are quite possibly familiar with my life portfolio track uh, tracker, which is brilliant because you can put your portfolio in here, it tells you how you are diversified and so on. And then as you scroll over, I'll zoom out for you for a sec. Second, it shows you all the core data, the growth margins, the ROEs, the ROIs, and so on. Now, it's been a little bit sluggish at times, especially when a lot of people are using it. So one of my coaching students, who's an absolute whiz, and a huge thank you to you, you know who you are, introduced the update button. So you literally click update, and the script runs, and see what happens. Look at that. Look how it pulls out the data. Apple, Microsoft, PayPal, Facebook. Uh, sorry, Ford, GM, Neo, Xpang, Lee, Tesla, these are just random stocks, but you see that? Do you see how beautiful that is? And you get the fundamental data in a space of a couple of seconds. Absolutely genius. So I'll be putting this update out live today to everybody in, in, the, in the Patreon Discord community. So if you are not over there already, well, you are obviously missing out massively. So how do you not miss out massively? Well, you go to, where do you go? You go here, phoenixfriends.org slash Patreon. Link should be below. There it is. Half covered. Crikey. Technology sometimes. Hey, there it is. Felix Friends of Patreon. It's like 20 cents a day, something like that. Join us for the year. You get an extra month off. And you are able to do incredible research. Look, it took 29 seconds 
to load the tickers for about 50 companies in all of the core data. So you want to do some benchmarks. You're thinking about buying a stock. Why not compare it against their competitors and see who's actually got better numbers, look who's actually got better long-term earnings growth, and who's got better insider ownership, better institutional ownership, better debt over equity levels, all that kind of core stuff. So this is absolutely brilliant and fantastic. Thank you very much for helping us to make this faster and more satisfying to use. Uh, Robert wants to, to uh, learn swing trading. I do have a mini swing trading course. Uh, Robert, you're one of my coaching students. Just just ask me for it in the chat. I'll I'll, I'll send you everything you need to know on the on the swing trading side. Um, I, in terms of stock trading for swing trading, I'm not a huge fan. I think the benefit of that course really is to get you to a higher level of technical analysis understanding, and that's quite important. Uh, but Robert, you're, you're one of my, my mentees. Just drop me a message in the, uh, in the private chat with me. Uh, we have a one-on-one -on -one private chat for all of the, the coaching students, and I'll, I'll send that over to you. Um, no, no worries. Um, John, sports betting, sports gambling. Yeah, it's in a marvelous industry. I, I, I know some people in that space who are making an absolute killing. Um, there is always a regulatory risk with, the, with that, and I think that's changing. That's always something to bear in mind. So if you want to invest in it for like 10 years or something, I don't know if it's going to, going to necessarily be around in the same form. Uh, again, look at their numbers. Look at their fundamentals. Use our stock tracker. Put all the tickets in here and just see what the numbers are. I think that's really what I would do. And the second thing I would then do is read their last earnings report, especially the end bit, which is so with the ask earnings call transcript. You'll find them online for free. Otherwise, drop me a message, John. I'll, I'll send you a link and um, read what the concerns are of analysts. That's that's those are the two steps you've got to do before you buy anything, and then take notes so that you have a record for why you did what you did. Now the market should be rebounding very nicely. Is it? Well, yes, it is a bit. So we got out the earnings data here at 8.30, where that big green line is. Uh, and we have been positive since, although not quite as much as we might expect. Why? Most people are still asleep. I think that's really the, the simple reason here. Mullen, however, is incredibly active, up 3.5%. Volatility is up 1.7%. And... Um, yeah, everything else is down, like literally everything else is down. But this data, I think once people comprehend this, I think once people look at lower than expected PCE price index, and which is inflation, significantly lower than expected. Yeah, it's still more than in, in, in April, but it's lower than we expected it to be. More people unemployed. These are the sort of things that we you know, throw little parties for. Uh, continuing jobless claims are up. They're now to 1.328 million. Okay, is that still a strong read? Yeah, it's still a strong read. The job market's still very strong. Um, it's still 3,000 less than in, in May, but we were expecting it to be 20,000, 21,000 less than in May. What is your view on drinking tea out of glass cups? I, I, I'm not convinced, I must say. And you, if you, you English lot out there, how do you, how do you judge that? I think you probably do. Am I expecting a pop? Yes, I am, though the market isn't obviously particularly, particularly rational of late. We obviously see a lot of the time total nonsense. Also, if you watched the Fed yesterday, if you watched that live stream, I, I streamed Jay Powell with uh, Lagarde, the European Central Bank uh, chair and, and, and the, the governor of the Bank of England and some bloke from, from South America who happens to be the president of the International Bank for Settlement, who could literally talk you to sleep. If you suffer from insomnia, get one of his books or recordings. It'll do the trick. But really what Powell came out with very, very clearly was that recession is going to come. He pretty much said that. I mean, he basically said, look, it's going to be really hard to avoid it. He didn't quite say that, but I'm paraphrasing. Uh, he just said it's gotten a lot more challenging. And obviously that's our aim. That's our intention. But he doesn't ever say there won't be a recession. And he doesn't say there is a high chance of avoiding a recession. He says it's possible to avoid a recession. Well, it's also possible that you could jump out of a 12th floor window and, and be fine, right? I mean, it, it can happen, but it's fairly unlikely. And I think that's exactly what's going on here. So the only thing that will really get us out of this mess is 
getting it over with more quickly. And that's really what I'm hoping for here. So we're seeing a slight improvement in economic data, which is good. I don't think it's going to be enough to really slow down the July 0.75% rate hike that I strongly expect, because we still have full, full employment, basically. And Jay Powell was saying yesterday he was frustrated by the sluggishness with which people return to work. So they left the labor market and, and, and he thought that after COVID, everybody would just go back and everybody would be like, I miss my cubicle. I miss driving for two or three hours a day to go get there and back. And I just loved it so much that the pressing gray air conditioned office, I really, really want to go back there. And strangely enough, people haven't. And actually, I congratulate those people. I think it's fantastic. People quitting the corporate world is something I highly recommend. And there's lots of ways of doing that. I, uh, I, I teach people how to start side hustles. I teach people how to become coaches. And I teach people how to become investors in stocks or options because we make fantastic returns. And all of it together is actually what I think is the perfect solution. I, I don't think you should be reliant on one income stream. That's how, It's like having a job. You should have lots of them. And if you have lots of them, you feel happy and free and you can go for a swim and you know in, on, in the, during the day and do whatever you want and enjoy all the marvelous places while everybody else is sitting in their gray cubicles. So that surprised them. But it also, again, just shows that He's still somehow hoping that the labor market's really going to ch change here. People are going to come back to work. I just don't think so. I, I don't see that happening. Once you are out of it and you're out of it successfully in some form or another, you're freelancing or something, why would you go back? It just doesn't make any sense. People haven't done it for two years and they're not coming back. So that means the only way to change this labor market is to just tank it. It's really the only solution here. And I think that's basically um, th th where they're going. MJC has seen some Americans make tea in the microwave. Oh, that's sacrilege. That's just, <laughs> that's just terrible. That's just horrible. Tea from a glass in Italy. Okay, you say it's okay. MJC is unsubbing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Well, my, my slight issue is that I normally have not so nice teacups, but as you can probably tell by the slightly unfurnished room behind me, my teacups are floating around in a container somewhere. So we should make a tea channel. Robert asking, is a recession fully priced in? Now you can see a golden retriever behind me. Um, I think to a large extent, yes. But you will still get significant volatility each time this comes back, right? So you will get the kind of Walmart, Target, real world stocks, the retailers and so on suffering a little. And you'll get a little bit of a bounce in the tech because... By getting into a recession, we get closer to tech rebounding because that's, that's the strange thing with recessions. Um, QQQ is still up here moderately. Pre-market actually down minus 1% still. That's, that's pre-market. Okay, so if you look at the QQQ on a little bit of a, of a longer scale and throw in recessions into the mix, where are recessions? Recession. Recession indicator. Nope, not that one. U.S. recessions. I think that's the right one. Okay. Look at all reset price. Here we go. So clear as mud, isn't it? Um, what typically happens is if you exaggerate this a little bit. So the green areas are recessions. The last three we had, 2000, uh, 2008, 2016. And what happens is that in a typical market, you go into the recession halfway through, you V out of it. Um, now, 2000 was a little bit special. Uh, we also got 9-11 um, that, that kicked into that. That made the whole thing a little bit worse. Uh, but, you know, this, which, this is what happened here. Where, where was it? September, right? September here. So you got a little bit of that bounce, but not a real one. But then you got it a little bit afterwards. So you still got the bounce. It, just, it was just delayed. And if you look at the 2016 recession, it wasn't really all that much of, of a market recession. So the market doesn't necessarily. So we went down a bit and then we sort of feed our way back out of it. And that's typically what happens. So by entering, oh, you can't see the chart. All right, that might be helpful. Okay, so this is 2016, not the greatest V in the world, but it's still a little bit of a V. Uh, 2008 is a much more textbook V. So you're tech stocks fall going into it and then somewhere halfway through it you kind of typically bounce out of it and that's what you would expect to happen 
in, um, in, in any recession is that actually we see it as an indicator towards a market bottom. And yeah, we're down quite a bit here. And if you look at, say, 2008, we went down about 50%, which is really quite a lot. I know you can't tell on the chart. Whereas right now, from top to bottom, we are at 34%. So, you know, there is still room for volatility. And I think that's really what, what I would continue to expect. And what does volatility do? It does one thing. It makes our options trades more profitable. That is why we're up 95%. We could actually make probably the same amount of money in, 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 a, in a flat market. In a, in a way, it's easier in a flat market. But regardless, volatility does help us. That's really what we trade on here. So learn how I made 95% since the beginning of the year, since January this year, indeed. Go to Felix Rental Org slash options. We have a program on it. It's about 100 lectures. You watch me live trade every week. You can ask me questions. Every single one of your questions gets answered by me or my coaches who are university lecturers teaching options. They really know their stuff. So go to Felix Rental Org slash options. Join us. Sign up. The coupon code is 95%. That'll get you 41% off. And that expires by, by the 4th of July, funnily enough. So here we go. Let's see uh, what... Uh, Robert, indeed, higher volatility, higher options, premiums, cha-ching, precisely. And that's precisely why we're making money on uh, Robert. Uh, there we go. There goes Winston, indeed. Winston's out again. I'm glad, glad you saw his furry backside. Uh, YG, YG asking, well, the European markets are down with job markets and unemployment news. So yeah, it's actually not really the unemployment that's such a big issue. I think it's inflation numbers. If you looked at the Spanish inflation number and the French inflation numbers today, they're pretty horrible. The German inflation number is, is just manipulated, right? So what have they done? Well, they've lowered taxes on energy uh, temporarily and, and thereby reducing their inflation, but it's a load of BS. And Lagarde yesterday, she was asked, well, by Bloomberg, um, well, what do you think about inflation numbers? Uh, aren't you worried about them uh, because they came in really high? Spain's inflation number came in at like record highs since the war, I think. And uh, she said, well, but German numbers came in lower than expected. And I mean, come on, don't just lie to us blatantly. You know why they came in lower, because government cut taxes. This is, n this is just, it's Biden-style manipulation. It doesn't achieve anything other than stimulus. And then a few minutes later, it felt like an hour, she said, I hope that governments don't just throw out stimulus money to fight this inflation impact on, on consumers, but do it targeted and give the money only specifically to the poorest people, which is, of course, the logical thing, the only logical thing I think she said yesterday. And what are they doing? No, they're just cutting taxes for everybody. California is giving you, I don't know, $1,100 if you earn half a million a year. What do you think those people are going to do with that? They're going to run out and buy another Peloton bike or something pointless, and they're just going to cause more inflation. I mean, the Peloton stock actually does need a bailout, so maybe that's money well spent. But it's just idiotic. Surely they must have data on who earns very little, who struggles. And if they don't, can you please tap into the Palantir Foundry system at the Inland Revenue because they must have the data and just give the money to the bottom 5% or whatever. And that will be money well spent from a, from a kind of morally ethical point of view and it won't cause masses of inflation, which is actually something that the UK has been doing for years, right? They have this, this winter gas support thing for, for the elderly or something, and they all get, I don't know how much, they get some extra money to make sure that they can heat their homes in the winter and don't freeze to death, which of course is a, is a, is a, a right thing to do, I would say. So there we go. Um, just joined, was data just released? All right, let me do a quick recap. Just give me 30 seconds here. What do you think about the states releasing new stimulus packages, Chris? So I, what I was just talking about, moronic. Simple, simple answer. It's the most idiotic thing. It'll cause more inflation. It'll cause more debt. The US as a government is on an unsustainable debt path. Jay Powell said that last week. He said that again yesterday. Every economist in the world agrees on it. And I know economists are not always the smartest people. I used to be one. I, I know. And to add to the debt pile is just absolutely idiotic. When tax money is coming in, you've got massive debt. You've got to use that tax money to pay off the debt. Otherwise, you're just essentially buying votes. It's just stupid. And if you are going to support people because they, they, they suffer through inflation, 
give it to those people who actually need it, right? There are a lot of people in California, I tell you, most of them do not need that $600 or whatever they're getting from, from, the, the, from the governor. So, uh, John, we haven't had a second quarter of negative GDP numbers. No, we got yesterday the final Q1 data. That's how it happens. We get preliminary data first, and then secondly, we get that same data again revised when everything's come in, and it was revised upwards. So we haven't got the Q2 data in yet. What day time is PCI data being released? All right, guys, if you just joined in, let me do a quick recap here for everybody. I'm up 95% on my options portfolio. <laughs> I'm always excited by that. I, I, I love that. It's, it's so much fun uh, trading and making money. It really is. It's actually just fun running any business and making money. And, and trading is just another business. That's what that is. And that's how you got to treat it as well. You got to treat it with the same respect, the same system, the same strategy, the same diligence, and, and invest in it. And I don't mean throw money at it, but actually talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about and who is making money. So if you want to learn, find somebody you can learn from or come and learn from me if you'd like. Felix slash options down below. See how I got 95% up. This is Risa realized profits this year, year to date. And it hasn't exactly been uh, the, the smoothest of markets, right? So, okay, key data, PCI month on month, this one here came in lower than expected, 0.6%. We were expecting 0.9%. Initial jobless claims, also really important, came in at 231,000. We were expecting 218,000. So more people unemployed, time to party. And the core PCI, which strips out inflation and food, because who needs, who, sorry, energy and food, because who needs to heat the home, who needs to drive anywhere, who needs to eat? We are all aliens, it came in as expected. So that's kind of good. Continuing jobless claims, this one down here, came in at 1.328 million. We were expecting it to fall to 1.31. So we were expecting the labor market to tighten further. It hasn't. Okay, yeah, we got 3,000 extra jobs, but that's just, you know, I don't know, a couple extra drive throughs or something. That isn't significant. So good news for the growth investors. Your NASDAQ stock investors are all the green ticks I put in here. Those are good news items. You celebrate... First of all, personal spending falling, uh, which is a quarter of what we were expecting it to be, and 66% down from April. So that's good news. It means people are spending less. People are getting worried. The consumer confidence is tanking, and I'll tell you why that's good news. You might think, this guy is crazy. Why is that good news? And definitely inflation being lower is, I mean, that deserves three ticks. And then more, more people being unemployed it also deserves a party, unfortunately. I know that's morally moribund, but that's, there, there we have it. I, I used the word moribund uh, on the live stream. Who doesn't want to do that? So what, what, how does this actually all function? How does it all tie together? Well, let me, let me draw you a little, a little chart. So we have less consumer spending, which is what the Fed is trying to achieve. That is essentially part of demand, right? And that's the, the part that, of the economy that the Fed can reduce. And that's what they aim to do. And they aim to do that through squeezing your, your mortgage rates up and your car loans, your home loans, and, and any kind of debt levels that you have. And also just by keep talking about it, by them keep, the fact that they keep talking about it, that you reduce confidence. And we saw yesterday that the consumer confidence number has fallen to the lowest level in, in 10 years or so, and you would expect that to tank consumer spending because we get a little bit worried. We're like, oh, maybe let's not buy the third Ferrari. Maybe we should stay at home this weekend. You know, that, that, that sort of behavior. And then as demand falls, what happens? Well, inevitably, you get higher unemployment because if you are not going to that Ferrari dealership and buying the third Ferrari, well, he might have to lay somebody off, right? The receptionist or somebody's going to have to go. And what therefore happens is, I can't move my cheat. When you have higher unemployment, you know what happens? You get less spending. And what does less spending do? Well, less spending reduces demand and you get into this vicious cycle. Now, the second thing that that should achieve is it should reduce, so lower demand, let's use a different color here, this should reduce inflation 
because from two points of view, one is you should have lower wage growth because as more people become unemployed, so this also feeds into that, consumers are going to feel a little bit more concerned about their jobs, you know, maybe six, 12 months down the road. So maybe they're not going to be pushing as much for, for higher uh, wage, wage growth. And secondly, um, the wage growth, again, of course, feeds into lower spending. So it kind of accelerates this whole, this whole process. And now we, from a from an investor point of view, what, what I suppose we really care about, because we only ever care about our own pockets, is that all of this lowers profits or earnings, as those strange bankers like to call them. Lower profits lead to what? They lead to falling PE multiples, and that leads to falling stock prices. And you can't see that. It leads to falling stock prices. And the whole thing then leads to lower expectations. And that's the one thing that hasn't happened yet. We haven't seen lots of announcements from lots of companies saying, hang on, we think our next round of earnings are going to be worse. So earnings seasons is about to kick off again. I know it's only just finished. It starts and stops all the time. Is look for forward-looking look, uh, statements. That's what's going to drive this earnings season. And if they are going to be more cautious, which I would expect them to be because the com companies are also looking at this, and if, if they are consumer businesses, they're going to be like, well, if there's less consumer confidence, less consumer spending, we're going to have to be a bit more cautious about where we think this business is heading. Uh, and therefore, you know what, what they do? Well, they hire less people. And they invest less. And all of this, of course, together feeds into this great big snowball of, of a recession. And in a sense, that's basically the end, end goal here for the Fed. And then what happens at the end? Superman some comes back, Jay Powell comes out, and he stops increasing rates. He stops destroying the money he's printed. And we were going to get some more support, probably some more stimulus, uh, maybe some regulatory uh, overhauls, and, and so on. And, and that's essentially how it ends. But from our point of view, this morning, as an investor, as a cold-hearted capitalist, you'd think the data was quite, quite good. Let's have a look at how the market's reacting to this. Well, Mullen got the pick, got the memo. QQQ is still down 1.3%. Now, why is that? Because the most guys early in the morning, first of all, are retail investors. They're not watching us here because there's only 300 of us on the call here. And obviously, most of you haven't hit the like button because if you had, there'd be 500 of us on the call here. So I'd love it if you did that. And they've read the headline and the headlines are recession woes, market wrap. People are reading what Jay Powell said yesterday. They read yesterday's news. They'll read today's news tomorrow. And that's generally what happens. Right? You get a Jay Powell speaking. People do the opposite of what he said for 24 hours, and then they read it, and then they do it. So if you want to get a little bit of an edge in the market, you know, tune in and smash that like button. I truly appreciate that. So uh, Nightbot is bullying people here again. Um, apologies, Brian. My, my, my bot is, is, is vicious. He's an ankle biter. It's like a little chihuahua. Bull put spread at open. <laughs> um, Iku is asking, should I sell some of my stocks to go for options puts for upcoming crash? Don't do it unless you really know what you're doing. The most dangerous trader is the one who has one idea and has half knowledge. So really, really caution it. I make my students paper trade for like weeks, often months, because it's really, really important to really practice this, understand it, and go through cycles. And the beauty with options is that you never run out of are out of op opportunities. They're literally opportunities, new opportunities coming up every single minute during the day. And it's never like you missed the great thing. It's not like, oh my God, I should have got Tesla in 2005 or something. This doesn't happen with options. That's one of the reasons I like it. So instead, I would study, practice, learn, paper trade, and, and, and repeat uh, rather than uh, jump on something. <laughs> yes, Nightbot does not handle excitement well, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Uh, there is an official board that officially declares a recession. Yeah, it's, there is no real legal definition of it. I mean, it's sort of 
you know, like the COVID thing, I think that was a recession. I think that's fairly accepted. I think that was just one quarter. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the typical definition is two quarters in a row of negative growth. So we had negative growth in Q1. Q2 is probably going to be positive. So we are looking more towards Q4, I would say, for, for real negative data here again. How long is the average recession from entry to recovery? How long is a piece of string, really? Totally depends, totally varies. A lot of that depends on, um, on the reaction by whoever is the governing body at the time. So these are all recessions going back to like 1919. And you can see they're all very, very different lengths. Now, quite a lot of them say this one here in 2007 started at the beginning of 08. It ended 18 months later. That was a fairly long one, 08. Uh, but there was a reason for that. The whole financial system collapsed and governments didn't understand it. Uh, 15 started in February, basically. It ended in June. So that was about 14 months, give or take. But like the one in, in, in 01, that was much shorter. It started in April. It ended in December. That was eight months. So a lot of this has to do with how much money they print, how much stimulus they put out. And you know the one we had from COVID, that should have been a one-year recession, right? But it wasn't because they just said, oh, let's put on the money printers, add 40% more US dollars. No, that won't cause, cause inflation. Honest, it won't. It really won't. No, no, no. It'll be transitory. Oh, oh who can we blame for this? Uh, the Chinese. Oh, no, no. The Russians. Let's blame the Russians. No one's ever liked them. They're in all the James Bond films. They're always the baddies. And, and that's basically where we are. That's kind of how e economics seems to work at the moment. If you watch those, those goons yesterday, the, the world's most important central bankers, they literally said, we have no idea. We don't really know. Our tools aren't that great. They're blunt and we have a lot to learn. It really was the most baffling little seminar that we watched there. And yeah, that's basically what's happening. But look at it again. Like politicians are already stimulating their economies again. States are throwing money at people, which is surely the lesson we learned over the last 18 months that that wasn't the greatest of ideas. But, you know, here we are again. Uh, live trading sessions should be on Monday. Isn't Monday a holiday in the US? Is it a market holiday on the 4th? I think it might be, in which case we'll do it Tuesday, Andrea. So if you're part of the Master Options program, you always see me trade live. I usually do that on Mondays, but occasionally the US throws a spanner in the works by celebrating something like, you know, the, the independence from from the British overlords. Uh, so uh, join us and you'll get to, see, get to see me trade live and you'll see how I am up 95%. And I say up, these are realized profits. It's not like a stock you buy, it's gone up and you're thinking, should I sell it, should I not? No, we take profits every week. We take profits all the time and we take that cash. I actually reinvest the cash into stocks because I'm a pretty conservative guy. So Monday is off. Yeah, as much as what I thought. Thank you very much. 4th of July, indeed. So everybody, I think, is going to have a pretty, pretty nice long holiday. Um, that makes sense, actually, now, yes. I was talking to Stockmo yesterday. We're going to do a live stream together. And I think I might have suggested the 4th of July, because this is how, how ignorant I am. They'll be doing it the, the week after on the 11th. That should be great fun. If you guys have questions you want to ask me, we're going to talk about, I think, mostly EVs. Uh, do. Uh, I'm also looking for some... Um, maybe one or two moderators who will assist our vicious nightbot to keep the live chat in line and positive and happy for that. So drop me a line on the Discord if you're if you're available for that. It'll be on the 11th. Uh, it should be a really fun uh, live chat with, with Stockmo. So here we are. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Quick recap is, well, the numbers are actually good. The numbers are good. The market hasn't realized it yet. QQQ is down 1.1%. It was down 1.3% just. So maybe people are waking up to it a little bit. I think we might see a bit of a recovery here or it could come in tomorrow just because people take a little bit of time. At the moment, everyone's worrying about the recession and what Jay Powell said yesterday in Portugal. And that stuff wasn't good, what they said. It really was not confidence building. It was really the opposite. So I strongly expect a recession. And what does that mean? Well, volatility is here to stay. That's what that means. And that's fantastic because we can keep making money. Check out the Master Options program at felixrenz.org slash options. Join me. I have literally made a 95% return since the 1st of January so far. And the intention is to keep that going. Uh, we are averaging about you know, 10% give or take uh, per month on, on uh, cash profits here on that. And 
we do that with 80% probability trades. We do that with managing and limiting our downside risks. We do that by diversifying lots of small trades and so on. Essentially, we want to be the casino rather than the gambler. And unfortunately, most retail traders are simply gamblers, not quite knowing what they want to do. So uh, check it out. It's completely risk-free. You literally join us. You'll get 90-day access to absolutely everything and including me trading life. And, 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 and if you, at the end of that 90 days, decide it wasn't for you, I give you your money back. Why? Because I don't want to keep you in a community that you don't want to be in. And 99.9% .9 of people stick around and get huge returns. The 0.1%, what do I do with you? Do I tell you off? No, I'll send you my favorite investment book. Uh, it's not on options. Uh, to keep you motivated, to keep you inspired, so that you keep learning, so that you continue to make yourself a better investor. That's what we got to do. You got to invest in yourself. You got to invest in those brain cells up there. Check it out. The coupon code is 95%. That's 95% that expires when? 4th of July. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you on the next one.